here's the thing, right? Like, I think this is kind of where the conversation about uh, racism um, and everything falls apart because everybody gets riled up when they have these big um, stories and these big incidents that happened, right? Somebody was murdered by the police, not just murdered, but, you know, on, on videotape, right? And then there was, you know, although it seemed very obvious to everyone watching uh, that what happened was, was uh, a crime, um, there wasn't swift justice, right? Um, you know, uh, there wasn't an immediate arrest and that sort of thing. And, and even if that was going to happen, there have been so many cases in the past where, where that didn't happen, where there, there was seemingly no justice, right? So the patience, um, I believe for a lot of people, had just you know, simply worn thin, right? But I think part of the problem is that um, you know, we wait for these, these big obvious incidents of racism where it's the little subtle things, it's the little daily um, prejudices that people have to deal with that, that really, um, really where the conversation has to start because um, it's something that you have to deal with every day. There's so many different types of prejudice. Everybody experiences it and everybody has it, right? We all have our prejudices. Um, you know, and I think that's also part of the problem too, is that people are unwilling to acknowledge their prejudice. Um, everybody on this earth has some, some form of prejudice um, that they're holding. Uh, it could be from an uh, experience they've had with someone in the past. It could be um, something ingrained uh, in, their, in their minds by their, their upbringing. You know, the environment that you've been brought up in has, has a large um, part to do with what, what, uh, what you think and what you believe is true in the world, right? So um, I think that's a, another big part of the issue is that people are unwilling to acknowledge the prejudice. Um, and if you're unwilling to do that, there, there's, there's no way for you to ever grow and, and, and overcome that, right? Yeah, I guess that's, I guess that's a pretty big point of all, of all of this is that if people aren't willing to acknowledge that they look at the world in a certain way and um, that they see the world, maybe they see the world a different way and they may not even know that they're doing it. Right. How do you, how do you, how do you explain that to someone? How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you illustrate to somebody that what they're doing or what they're saying or what they're feeling is, is maybe not normal or is, is just not, is not right. I don't even know the right way to say it. You, you know, it's, it's funny, too, because I think the other part of that is, uh, along with acknowledging your prejudices, um, we have to give each other space um, and comfort in being able to express, um, you know, our viewpoints that may not be in line with, with societal norms, right? Because uh, I think people are really quick to, to, to jump on someone and say, oh, you're a racist or, oh, you're, you're, you're uh, you know, whatever the term, you know, the the term of the day is, um, you know, you're, you're, you're this or you're that because of a viewpoint you have that, that, that may be incorrect or, or unacceptable in society, right? Um, if, you, if you're unwilling to give people space to grow, not only will they not openly, uh, they, they're either not going to openly um, express their prejudices and try to um, have some dialogue about them and, and, and maybe see a different viewpoint. Um, they're either going to do that or, or they're going to join with the other people that think like they do, right? Uh, and then it's just this perpetual cycle of, of, of people hating each other. Um, and you, you run the risk of pushing them further, right? I mean, that's... Absolutely. absolutely. You, you, you do. Now, obviously, there, maybe there's some people that, that are too far, right? Um, but but I, I don't think, you know, I don't think that... Um, I don't think that even someone that has gone so far as to, you know, whether it's their, their life experience or whatever it is, I don't think that someone that, you know, is even an, an, an open, uh, admitted racist, right? Well, I don't even think that's the issue, right? Because you could think something uh, and believe something, but as long as you're not taking action on that, right? If you're not infringing on other people's rights, um, with your viewpoint, then it really doesn't become the issue. The issues arise because you have people that, uh, whether whether it be their their, you know, their racism or their prejudice or or whatever it is, or, or just their lack of, of concern for human life. You have people that are that are taking 
um, other people's rights and, 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 and infringing upon them, um, that's where the problem comes into play because you can think whatever you want to without taking an action. And then, you know, everybody just, you know, everybody just, just thinks what they think and there's, there's really no issue. But um, I think that most, for the most part, people are, are willing and able to have dialogue and to, to hear different viewpoints on these subjects and people would just be patient about it, you know? You, 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 there's too much, you know, particularly like on social media, you'll, I'll see people who will post and say, oh, if you, you know, if you voted for Trump, you can, you know, you can just unfriend me now. Or if you voted for Hillary, or if you support Bernie, or if you're on this side, if you're not on my side, then I, I, there, there's no need to, to, to say anything, right? There's no need to have a conversation, which is, is it's foolish to me. I had this conversation with the lady, um, I believe she's from the, the South, um, just from, from the conversation that we had, but I, I don't know for sure. But I, I, so I wrote this post and I don't remember the exact words, but it says something to the effect of there's, there's no black side, there's no white side, there's no blue side, there's only a right side and the wrong side. Um, and a, a bunch of like pages picked, it, picked up the post and like the feminists reposted it and there was a lady on there and she basically said like, you know, it's not that simple, you know? And I asked her like, you know, please ex explain that to me. And she basically said that there's like cultural norms um, that people grow up with that, that might not be um, necessarily ex acceptable um, in the eyes of other people, but it's just kind of um, the way that, that, that they were raised or the way that they grew up in, in, their, in their community. And I said, you know, I understand that absolutely. Like that doesn't make you, like I'm not gonna label you something just because um, the, the, the part of the world you grew up in, um, certain things uh, were, were, um, were just were normal, right? Um, that, that doesn't, I'm not gonna judge you for that. You have some prejudice, like, <laughs> great, so do I. <laughs> we all do, right? Um, you know, and a lot of times that prejudice is, is, is against people that look like you. It might be against people that look like you more so than it's against other people. I know that's that's um, that can be quite typical in, in the black community um, and in other communities as well, right? You see, you see, um, you see countries and places where people all, for the most part, look the same, right? Um, like I, you know, I travel a lot, and you, you know, you go to, you know, I could go like to Australia or somewhere, and it, it looks like. California, right? It's it's a it's a mix of all types of people. There's no like, there's no one uh, definitive you know ethnicity there, right? But you could go somewhere like Japan or um, or China or someplace, and the people for the most part look the same. Or Mexico, right? Um, but even in those places, they they find ways to divide one another, right? Whether it's religion, whether it's class. Um, it, it could be all sorts of things, but they, they still find ways to divide themselves from other people that look like them, right? So prejudice exists in, in, in every form, shape, and fashion you can imagine, right? You, you could see it in the workplace, right? People divide themselves amongst, uh, you know, how much income they bring in or, you know, so, so, any number of things, right? So yeah, type of job uh, or whatever. Absolutely, right? So I think... People b b before people point fingers and are so eager to label people, um, you really have to take a look one at yourself and just acknowledge that we all have prejudice, and so it's not something that it's it's really not something that you can judge someone on, you know, because their prejudice is is different than yours, right? Uh, I think obviously again where we draw the line is where people take take actions that infringe on other people's rights based on those prejudices. Um, but aside from that, I think that you have to look at your own prejudice and you really have to have conversations with people, honest conversations, um, you know, and and try to show people that although they might have a certain experience with someone that looks like you or comes from the place you come from, um, there there is a very diverse. Um, group of people that that look just like you do or come from the place you come from right and that's really you know kind of how my my worldview was shaped is because i've been exposed to so many different types of people and i've had 
people of every race, every religion, um, every class that have treated me um, so amazingly, right? Um, that I could never group a, in, in any type of person, um, you know, in, into into a into a, a, a stereotype and say that these people are, are that or or, or, or uh, you know something to that effect. I just I couldn't do it, you know. But yeah. I also recognize that everybody hasn't had that experience. Yeah, it's this it's the whole idea of dividing. And what, what I think you said was really interesting is that the it's the way we divide ourselves. And I think about why. Why do we why do we do that? Whether it was the woman from the, the southern United States that you might have been talking to there that's growing up um, in a world where they just sort of everybody else looks like her, but they're still going to find ways to divide, whether that's by income or it's by job or, or whatever it is. <clears throat> why the, the question of why just keeps coming up for me. Why do we do that to ourselves? I think it's because people, do, I think people have a, I think people have a warped sense of why we're here. You know, and I think ultimately at the end of the day, we're all here to serve. We're here to serve each other. Uh, we're here to love each other. And if you don't have that love for people, um, regardless of what they look like or where they're from or how much money they make, if you don't have that, um, it, 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 it starts to erode who you are, right? Um, when, when, you start, when you start having a lack of love and empathy for one group of people, it's very easy for that to infect into other areas of your life, right? Um, it's like when they, you know, I was, I, I, I watch a lot of uh, like, you know, unsolved uh, mysteries and murder cases. I watch a lot of uh, forensic files, right? And those type of documentaries. And um, one of the things they talk about with like serial killers is they, they say how oftentimes they started like with animals, right? Like they, you know, they tortured animals and, did that sort of thing. And I think, I think that happens the same way with, um, with, with humans when they're, when they just have a lack of empathy and care for people, right? It just starts to, to um, erode your, your soul and just the, the fabric of your life, right? That's why you see criminals can do increasingly more vile and disgusting acts because they don't have a conscience anymore, right? And that's, it's just, it's a, it's just kind of a snowball effect, right? So I think the same thing happens with people when you start, when you, when you stop caring about, you know, the homeless person on the corner, um, you know, it's, it's that, it, that eventually will, will lead you to have the same lack of empathy for people who, who maybe look like you or, or, you know, come from the same neighborhoods that you come from, right? Yeah. It's an interesting perspective, that sort of trickle down effect that it has in, in other aspects of your life. I never really thought about it that way. I also think that change happens on it um, in your circle, right? In your circle of influences where the most change can happen. And I think that really happens with people having honest conversations um, about prejudice in general and all, all types of prejudice and, mm -hmm. and being open, one, being open to the fact that People are going to have have preconceived notions about you and prejudices towards you, and that's okay. It's impossible for people not to have them. Um, it's just, it's just entirely impossible, right? So you have to expect that, and you have to accept it. And you and and by doing that, you know, because that's that's part of it too, right? It's like if I meet someone, and I have met, <laughs> I've met plenty of people who you know, have racist tendencies, right? They might not even be racist, but they say or do things that are not, not openly accepted in society, right? But they grew up different than I did. Their parents were different. They believed different things. Their grandparents were different. Um, and if we exclude them from, from our conversations just based on that alone, it's never gonna change. They're gonna hold the same views and they're going to pass those views to their children, their children's children. There's, there's, you, you'll, you'll never end that cycle, right? I think that we would all do well to recognize that people are complex. Black, it's not black and white. So there, there are so many um, complexities with the way um, the peop that people think and why they think the things that they think. 
Um, and so get, get, the only way you're going to know that is to actually have honest dialogue with people and to understand. Um, yeah. Things. And tough conversations, right? I mean, I got to believe that these conversations are going to be kind of painful. And I guess that's the point, right? To talk about like how privilege affects us and what's going on. And absolutely. You know, you know what, you know, what's funny. I'll tell you like a, it's like a deep, dark secret, <laughs> but it's kind of funny to me. So I see these things in the news all the time and you'll see like, um, this big backlash because like um, a, and this is very recent, but like a white person um, said the N word or they, they did something that was perceived as racist and, you know, big backlash follows it. They get fired. They get blackballed from whatever, you know, industry they're in all this huge fallout happens. And the funny thing is it's like, Every time I hear a story like that, <laughs> the first thing I do is I go to Instagram or whatever, and I message that person. And I tell them, hey, you know, sorry for everything that's happening. You know, I understand that, uh, you know, there's times are crazy for you right now. But um, I also recognize that this is this this was something that happened uh, in a moment of anger or uh, rage and you had this outburst and this doesn't define who you are even if you are racist even if that's how you grew up it, it doesn't mean that you have to stay that way right so I think when people are so quick to judge people based on an action or something that something that um, something that they might have been you know a thought that they might have been raised with from from their childhood if you don't have the, the, the people that, um, that they're speaking out against, like if you're a white guy and you're racist and you say something and, and the backlash from that, you know, you lose your job, you, 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 you lose your friends and family, you, you know, your life, you know, is turned upside down, right? Like, well, how are you going to change that viewpoint if, everyone that you hated initially or that you that you lashed out against is celebrating your demise right the only way to change that is for someone who who isn't already on your side to show you love and empathy and and just to show you that your viewpoint might not be correct because if it was this would this this person wouldn't be supporting you particularly at this time right so you wouldn't have been uh, fired or you wouldn't have had these things happen to you, right? It sort of, sort of feels like the difference between doing what's right and what's easy, right? You can make an example of this person and fire him and do all those things because he's, uh, he or she has said this kind of thing, or you can um, take a different road, right? I, I, people, companies, brands today, they're, they're taking that first road. If you're, you're, you're doing something like that, you're, uh, you're out, right? And, and that's a, that, that's a good thing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not to say that that, that that those things shouldn't happen, but it's almost it's like it's like when somebody goes to jail. It's like, okay, you committed a crime, you go to jail, you do your time. Like, they shouldn't have to serve that time for the rest of their lives, right? So, um, if everybody closes the door on them and, and doesn't afford them any other opportunities, like, obviously their only choice is to go back to to the way they were, right? It's the same thing for, for, for someone that has a, has a viewpoint that's not accepted by society, right? And, and they express that openly, right? Um, especially in today's culture, like you're gonna suffer from that, right? And again, it's not to say that you don't, that there shouldn't be consequences to pay. But the reality of it is, it's like somebody was asking the other day, um, like with this, this um, you know, with the, the George Floyd situation, like, do you want justice? And the funny thing is, it's like, I couldn't really say that I do because the reality of it is like, yeah, I want, we, we want there to be, be a punishment, right? But to say that we want justice is very different for me at least because I don't want justice for myself. Like, I do not want to bear the weight of all of the things that I've done in my life I don't want what I deserve because if we all got what we deserved, like there, there probably wouldn't be very many people here. Right. So yeah, you'd, you'd be very uh, surprised with what you get. Yeah, absolutely. So, 
I, I think that there has to be forgiveness for, for, for people and, and, pe and you, there has to be outreach in that. You have, to, you have to show people, especially people that don't look like you, especially people that are opposed to you and your way of thinking, right? You have to show them that their way of thinking is wrong. And the only way to do that is to show them a different side to what they're used to, right? Because I, I think in most cases, a lot of racism, yeah, a lot of it is, is, is taught, but at some point it, it, there was some experience, you know, particularly today, I think there was some experience where um, we're all prejudiced, right? You had an experience with a person that looked like this or came from here and, and it was a bad experience. They, 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 they didn't treat you well um, or whatever the case or, you know, and um, so I think the, the way to combat that is to show them that, hey, like, there are different people that look like this, that come from here, that will give you a much different experience than what you're, than what you're used to or what you expect, right? Or, or from what the media or someone else has told you to expect from, from people that, that look like this, right? So, uh, and I think people are more than willing to see that. Like, once they get a glimpse of it, I think people are, are uh, more than willing to, to change their viewpoints, right? I've seen it happen, you know? So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's interesting. This has been uh, this has been enlightening for me. I, uh, Jason, I appreciate the time. I'm sure this won't be the last time we talk on the subject. Um, always, but uh, but I, as always, I appreciate the time you've given to us, and uh, you know, hopefully, we can sort of catalyze some of this uh, in our industry and people that we know and people that you know. Hopefully, we can start the ball rolling down the hill that uh, you know that gets this whole thing changed. Absolutely, brother. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. It was good talking to you. All right, my man. Talk to you soon. All right, see you.